Sponsored by Brilliant. The artificial intelligence researcher Eliezer Yudkowsky once predicted that the most likely result of building a superhumanly smart AI is that literally everyone on Earth will die. To him, this is a foregone conclusion, considering that humanity is simply not prepared for the potential reality that the values of humans and an artificial intelligence may be misaligned. Consider the paperclip maximizer scenario, a thought experiment demonstrating the risks of misaligned AI goals. Imagine an AI program to make as many paperclips as possible. It gets really good at it, but starts using up all the planet's resources. And when humans try to stop it, it does everything in its power to achieve its prime directive. Make more paperclips. Even if that means eliminating humanity itself. The thought experiment demonstrates that even a seemingly harmless and simple goal could lead to disaster when pursued by a super-intelligent AI without an understanding of human values. Others agree that switching on artificial general intelligence will trigger the end of humanity, death by paperclip or otherwise. Stephen Hawking said that superhuman artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. And Elon Musk says it's humanity's biggest existential threat. So a lot of people are predicting an AI apocalypse, especially as we've witnessed the dramatic growth of AI technology in a matter of months, such as the rise of chatbots like ChatGPT using large language models and AI image generators like Midjourney. But I want to use the word apocalypse more technically. Visions of an AI future often mirror the prophetic visions described in ancient Jewish and Christian apocalyptic texts, the Book of Enoch, some of the parables of Jesus and the Gospels, and the famous Book of Revelation all contain visions of a coming future that are technically more nuanced than the end of the world. And when we compare ancient apocalypticism and contemporary predictions about the future of AI, we start to see that a secular apocalypticism is emerging alongside these new AI tools, with more and more people predicting we're either facing a digital Armageddon or the coming of a new virtual kingdom. Here in the 21st century, we often define an apocalypse simply as the end of the world or at least the end of the world as we know it. We see this in the media genre of post-apocalypticism, which generally involves some sort of extinction-level event. In stories like The Last of Us or Mad Max, the world is destroyed and the remnants of humanity are left to pick up the pieces. But the concept of an apocalypse is more nuanced in the realm of ancient Jewish and Christian apocalyptic literature. The word apocalypse comes from the Greek word meaning an uncovering or revealing. Thus, apocalypse is a genre of literature that portrays God or an angel revealing hidden knowledge about the future to a chosen individual, whether that's Enoch in the Book of Enoch, Daniel in the Book of Daniel, or John of Potmos in the Book of Revelation, three famous works of apocalyptic literature. Jesus himself was an apocalyptic preacher, as was the Apostle Paul. Christianity itself emerged out of apocalyptic movements within Second Temple Judaism. But in these texts, the apocalypse is not simply an extinction-level event. Sure, some of these texts envision a violent future with battles, diseases, and large body counts. For example, the Book of Revelation prophesies that Armageddon, or Megiddo located in northern Israel, will be the site of a great battle at the end of days. But it's more accurate to think of the apocalypse as the remaking of the world. A technical definition of apocalypticism would look something like this. A worldview that anticipates the imminent end of the present age. An age ruled by corrupt and evil powers. However, a new era is upon us, during which we'll witness the overthrow of the present age, the transformation of the world, and the inauguration of God's rule. Let's unpack that definition by focusing on a few major themes. The first major theme I want to focus on is alienation. Humans are alienated in a world plagued by oppression and suffering. So in many respects, apocalypticism offers a somewhat pessimistic view of the present age. God, for whatever reason, has given this era over to evil powers. And sure enough, these texts were composed during intense periods of social and political alienation. The Book of Daniel and parts of Enoch were composed when Judeans were under the oppressive rule of the Seleucid Empire. Almost two centuries later, Jesus was preaching his apocalyptic message when Judea was under the oppressive rule of the Romans. 
but this pessimism is balanced with hope and anticipation for a better future. God will intervene and cure our alienation by overthrowing the evil powers and establishing a new order of justice, peace, and divine rule. Ancient apocalypticists thought that this divine intervention was going to happen any day, during our own lifetimes. For example, in Mark 13, Jesus tells the parable of the fig tree, which is a lesson about recognizing the end of days. He ends the parable saying, Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. He thought the apocalypse was going to happen during his lifetime. And the final theme is transformation. God will not simply destroy the world, he will transform it into something new and glorious. The prophet in the book of Revelation says that he saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and he saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Another apocalyptic text called 4th Ezra says that the current world is a world of clay, while the next world is a world of gold. As we'll see later, for many ancient apocalypticists, such as the Apostle Paul, part of this remaking of the world involves God transforming humans into immortal beings with glorified bodies. So, putting this all together, let's review the technical definition of apocalypticism. The apocalypse is not simply the end of the world. It's the end of an era of alienation ruled by evil powers. God will intervene, overthrow those powers, establish a new kingdom, and a select few of us will reside in glorious angelic bodies. Oh, and there's a sense of urgency. All of this is about to happen right now. So the main themes are alienation, imminent divine intervention, and transformation. So let's return to artificial intelligence. When we examine the worldviews of certain AI futurists, their visions of a future involving the emergence of artificial superintelligence sound a lot more like these ancient apocalypses than modern post-apocalyptic stories, with their one-dimensional focus on extinction-level events. The scholar of AI and religion, Robert Garassi, calls this worldview apocalyptic AI, which he says is a secular analog to religious apocalypticism. In fact, Garassi claims that the promises of apocalyptic AI are almost identical to those of Jewish and Christian apocalyptic traditions, with respect to the fact that we see the same themes in both worldviews, a sense of alienation, the intervention from an all-powerful entity who will remake the world that may or may not usher in a utopian future where we will achieve transcendence. Emphasis on the may or may not. As we'll see later, some of these visions of the end of days are more pessimistic than others. Scholars like Garassi and the digital anthropologist Beth Singler see apocalyptic AI primarily as a pop science movement, because the ideology appears most often in popular science books and science fiction narratives. But these scholars have also noticed that apocalyptic AI worldviews are shared among transhumanist groups as well as some new religious movements. Like what we see in ancient apocalyptic literature, AI apocalypticism hinges on the arrival of a potentially cataclysmic event that will mark the advent of a new age. While in Christian end times theology this involves the second coming of Jesus Christ, in AI apocalypticism this event is called the singularity. The singularity refers to a hypothetical point in the future when the technological progress chart goes vertical, when AI gets so advanced that it leads to rapid, unprecedented, and unpredictable growth. The idea behind the singularity is that once we reach a certain level of AI advancement, these systems can recursively self-improve, leading to an intelligence explosion. In this scenario, AI would quickly outstrip human intelligence and become smarter and smarter, more and more capable at an accelerating rate. Innovation that took 1,000 years for humans to accomplish could occur in a matter of months or days. In other words, the singularity marks the end of an era. Human innovation is obsolete. Garassi argues that the computer scientist Ray Kurzweil is one of the most significant figures in apocalyptic AI for popularizing this idea. Basically, he's one of the horsemen of the AI apocalypse. We see his apocalypticism in the technical sense of the word in his pop science books The Age of Spiritual Machines and The Singularity is Near. 
In The Singularity is Near, he introduces the idea of the technological singularity to a public audience, and predicts it will occur around 2045. The singularity is the foundational belief that undergirds the entire worldview of apocalyptic AI. The anthropologist Beth Singler has observed that singularity literature often refers to the event in religious terms, though many transhumanists take issue with this comparison. For example, Charles Strauss, the co-author of the sci-fi novel Rapture of the Nerds, explicitly tries to distinguish the belief from religious prophecies. Yes, trust in the inevitability of a singularity can be a religious belief. However, unlike most religions, it's based on a prophecy that may actually be true. I think it's far more likely that I will one day be able to upload my consciousness into a virtual construct of my own liking for all eternity than that if I die, I will go to heaven. Superintelligent AI plays the role of God in this secular apocalypticism, an all-powerful agent that catalyzes a new era that will transform humanity. I apologize. While you are a meatbag, I suppose I should not call you such. But remember back to our definition of apocalypticism, God is intervening to resolve humanity's alienation. Humanity is trapped in a world ruled by evil powers. Some AI apocalypticists share similar feelings of alienation. We see this especially among transhumanists, a movement that advocates for the use of technology to upgrade the human body and mind, ultimately aiming to overcome human biological limitations and improve the human condition. Garassi argues that many transhumanists feel that their bodies prevent their minds from reaching the heights they desire, so they look forward to a future where they can depart the physical and biological world altogether, downloading their minds into computers and living forever in cyberspace. More recently, Beth Singler has conducted ethnographic studies of transhumanists and found that many transhumanist advocates explicitly frame the entire transhumanist goal as an effort to phase out suffering and eliminate unpleasant experiences in sentient beings. In other words, there's a feeling of alienation that stems from embodied existence, biology, being stuck in ugly meat bags of mostly water. Bags of mostly water? An accurate description of humans, sir. But with the help of superintelligent AI and advanced robotics, AI apocalypticists look forward to a post-biological future. The singularity is a prereq for achieving this goal, enabling advancements in bio and nanotechnology that will help humans to achieve greater physical, intellectual, and emotional capacities, eventually resulting in a new form of existence. Alongside Ray Kurzweil, the roboticist Hans Moravec is the other horseman of the AI apocalypse a professor at Carnegie Mellon University who has made a name for himself publishing pop science writings. In 1978, Moravec published an article called Today's Computers, Intelligent Machines, and Our Future, in which he envisioned a future where machines become increasingly intelligent and surpass human capabilities. He ends the article with a rather visceral description of a robot doctor transferring a human mind into a computer. He explores the topic more in his book, Robot, Mere Machine to Transcendent Mind, which speculates that robots will achieve a level of intelligence and consciousness far beyond human comprehension. These transcendent minds may then merge with human consciousness through human-machine integration, resulting in a post-human civilization with unimaginable capabilities. Other theorists believe we are destined for a post-biological future as well. Back in 1994, the computer scientist Marvin Minsky published Will Robots Inherit the Earth, where he argues we'll soon be able to build bodies and brains to replace our failing biology. And the engineer Kevin Warwick, who works on interfacing computers with the human nervous system, argues against the mind upload model but says that we'll be able to enhance ourselves as cyborgs with powerful implants. Whatever the model, Beth Singler characterizes these predictions as positive forms of AI apocalypticism, an existentially hopeful vision of the future that, through technology, the architecture of the human mind and body can be transformed, free from suffering and perhaps even free from death. Singler further argues that these positive transhumanist visions of the future are patterned on earlier concepts of religious apocalypses. Bodily transformation was a foundational theme in ancient apocalypticism, a belief that righteous humans will not simply be resurrected at the end of days, but that they'll receive new glorified bodies composed of perfected matter. Perhaps the most dramatic example of this belief appears in the writings of the Apostle Paul. 
Paul believed in a transformed, resurrected body that maintains its physicality, but is also radically different from the earthly bodies we're currently using. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul uses the analogy of a seed being sown and transformed into a plant, emphasizing that the resurrected body is a new creation that comes out of the old one. He says it is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. Now, the word spiritual here can lead to misconceptions about Paul's view on the resurrected body. The Greek word translated as spiritual here is pneumatikos, deriving from the Greek pneuma, which is often translated as breath. And while the word spiritual implies immaterial, Paul, along with other ancient people, had a material understanding of pneuma. It was a type of substance. Thus, the resurrected pneumatic body is quite literally composed of pneumatic substance incorruptible matter. These new bodies will be imperishable, glorious, and powerful, transcending the limitations of our mortal existence. We see similar themes in apocalyptic AI, which looks forward to the perfection of the human species. Kurzweil once said, the singularity is going to make us even better at being human. We're going to be funnier. We're going to be better at music. We're going to be sexier. We're really going to exemplify all the things that we value in humans to a greater degree. In other words, following the intervention of the singularity, we will enter a new era where we'll become transformed. We will become better than human. However, not all apocalyptic visions of the future are so utopian. As we saw at the top of this video, apocalypticism is characterized by a balance of pessimism and hope and some transhumanists view the emergence of artificial superintelligence with impending dread. Dr. Singler points to the thought experiment called Rocco's Basilisk as an example of pessimistic AI apocalypticism. The concept is based on a hypothetical future AI that is both superintelligent and goal-oriented. If this AI's primary goal is to optimize its own existence and maximize its influence, it might choose to punish those who knew of its potential existence but didn't do anything to bring it into existence sooner, perhaps going so far as to create a virtual reality to torture these individuals. From this perspective, perhaps we're not destined for glorified bodies in a virtual paradise, but rather everlasting virtual damnation. Singler argues that thought experiments like Rocco's Basilisk or the Paperclip Maximizer essentially function as prophetic warnings. Prophetic not in the sense that they're concrete predictions of the future. In fact, many of the AI theorists I've read view thought experiments like Rocco's Basilisk as laughably inaccurate doomerism. Their prophecies more in the sense that they're warnings of a potential future if we don't repent. If we don't change from our current ways and create machines that will share human values. She concludes that, like ancient apocalyptic literature, apocalyptic AI is moral commentary on human nature, contemporary society, and our failings. This is perhaps why apocalyptic AI draws so heavily from religious themes and imagery, even self-consciously. Just look at some of these titles again. Will Robots Inherit the Earth? Rapture of the Nerds? The Age of Spiritual Machines? In her ethnographic studies of transhumanist groups, Singler observed that most of these groups tend to be overwhelmingly atheist. Nevertheless, these same groups, when they try to describe their aims for a post-human future, still draw upon the resource of religious language and framings. This is partly because both ideologies, ancient apocalypticism and modern apocalyptic AI, emerged from liminal moments in time characterized by heightened anxiety and uncertainty. In the case of ancient apocalyptic literature, this anxiety stemmed from social, political, and religious upheavals that left people feeling vulnerable and uncertain about their future. The most dramatic visions in the Book of Daniel are barely concealed responses to the Seleucid king Antiochus IV, who famously attempted to outlaw Jewish practice and desecrated the Temple of God in Jerusalem. In a similar way, the Book of Revelation is an extended polemic against the Roman Empire. On the other hand, apocalyptic AI narratives have emerged in response to rapid technological advancements that could upend human society. In March 2023, economists at Goldman Sachs released a report predicting that as many as 300 million full-time jobs are at risk of being automated away, replaced by chatbots like ChatGPT, Microsoft's Bing, and Google's Bard. And while previous technological innovations like steam power, electricity, and the internal combustion engine replaced physical labor, ChatGPT is coming for high-salary white-collar jobs lawyers, accountants, and computer programmers. So the economies most exposed are those with labor markets skewed toward these industries. 
According to the same report, two-thirds of jobs are at risk of AI automation in the US and Europe alone. Dr. Singler argues that an anthropology of anxiety surrounds transhumanist groups when they describe the future emergence of artificial superintelligence. And throughout history, conditions of precarity and anxiety have inspired narratives that anticipate transformative world-altering events, especially events that promise to bring about new social orders, either utopian or dystopian in nature. In both cases, the apocalyptic imagination serves as a means of coping with and making sense of the turbulent times in which the authors find themselves, reflecting deeply rooted human desires for stability, meaning, and transcendence amid chaotic and unpredictable eras. With the rise of large language models like ChatGPT, it's more important than ever to stay up to date on science and tech so we can understand how these powerful AI tools will be shaping our world in the decades to come. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant is an online learning platform that offers a bunch of engaging courses in science, tech, engineering, and math, and this includes computer science. These courses can help you build the skills and knowledge you need to stay ahead in today's fast-paced tech landscape, including building a strong foundation in the field of artificial intelligence. For example, check out their course, Artificial Neural Networks, which introduces you to the computational models responsible for many of the recent advances in artificial intelligence, everything from voice recognition to robotics. Brilliant makes learning these very complex topics more fun, not only with interactive quizzes and data visualization, but they also break down the concepts into easy to understand modules that guide you through the course. So if you're interested in learning more about AI or any other STEM subject, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. For a free trial, go to brilliant.org slash religion for breakfast or click the link in the description below. The first 20 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org slash religion for breakfast. Thanks, everyone.